Hello, I'm Derek from Inflatable Sup Authority, and today we'll be reviewing the Drew Brophy edition of the Skyla CX. We'll be going through the pros, the cons, my exact impressions when I was paddling this board, as well as some comparables, just to give you a good idea of who this board is for. Stay tuned. Who is the Sea God Skyla CX for? As you can see, the really integrate uh, design on the bottom of the board here. I say this board is best for beginners and intermediates. In my testing I especially felt that the board is really good for smaller paddlers. Now I say that because it's a supremely lightweight board at 19.8 pounds which means that you know if you're maybe under 5'10 it is a lot easier to carry this board to the shore especially if it's like low tide compared to if it was a heavier board that's like 28 pounds like some of the boards in the market are like this is also a good board for paddlers who want a little bit of a cross between an all around a touring board although i will say in my testing i felt this was a little bit more of an all around board as opposed to touring I know it has the pointy nose, but the feeling of the board in terms of paddling as well as the hydrodynamics definitely reminded me a little bit more of an all-around board. At 33 inches wide, it is plenty stable for most paddlers. Now just to let you know about the specs of this board, the Skyla CX. This specific one is the Drew Brophy edition by the way. Drew Brophy is a famous surfing artist and paddling enthusiast who's been around the industry for 30 years. His designs are inspired by surf slash element inspired designs. So you can see even the fine little details here. How there's little sort of waves and splashes that outline the main um, subjects of the board. So this board is 11 feet, three inches. It's 33 inches wide, which is more in the all around paddle board category of things. It's an astonishingly lightweight 19.8 pounds and its maximum capacity is 350 pounds. This board is made of a cross weave drop stitch material. So it is one of the better design paddle boards out there. There's more quality materials in it. And that's part of the reason why it is so lightweight is because of this cross weave. Basically the drop stitch threads are reinforced with multiple threads and that allows you to use less drop stitching. So which significantly decreases the weight of the board. Now we're gonna do nose to tail of the board. So starting with the nose. So you can see there's a little bit of an uplifted rocker here. You can see there's the handle, prominent Sea Gods logo, followed by nice little, um, the light wood design. You can see here's the front bungee deck webbing. There are four rows of bungee deck webbing at the front, which is something I really appreciate. And it's also very close together, so that arrangement of bungee deck webbing is really good for smaller items, like putting a water bottle in there didn't move at all in any of my own water test. You can see this board has two action mounts. It can be used to screw in um, GoPro action mounts. So you just screw it in there, you attach the GoPro to the mount, and then you can document your journey. These are M6 threaded, so if you're looking to buy other accessory mounts onto this board, just make sure you see the M6 threading on there and it should work. I appreciate the deck pad being particularly grippy. I did find that when I was paddling this board bare feet at White Rock Beach a year ago, I felt that it really gripped my feet very well, better than a lot of other Diamond Groove deck pads, and that's because the embedding is a lot more, the edges are a lot more um, pronounced compared to contoured, some of the other Diamond Groove edges there. 
You can see as well at the back, there's some D-rings for either a shoulder strap or you can attach Sea God's kayak seat to it. There's the handle, pretty comfortable on the hands. Although I would appreciate if this neoprene material was here on the bottom as well. But it was still pretty comfortable. I carried it for a few hundred meters. It was pretty good. Finally, we get to the back of the deck webbing here. So this can be used for like speakers, small bags, coolers, etc. That's usually what I like to put at the back. And then there's a handle as well as just the inflation valve. Now the PSI of this board is recommended between 14 and 18 PSI, but it can go to 20. This specific day, I put it at 15. 15 is about where I put all my paddle boards at. These are the accessories that come with this package. So you can see there's a three piece paddle with a teardrop shaped paddle blade. The paddle blade is nylon. The paddle is actually carbon hybrid for the shaft. See, they have a dual chamber pump as well as a landing blanket, which is actually very handy. I do appreciate that they actually let this board come with that. It's great for setting up the board and you don't want to have uh, dirt all over the board whenever you're folding it up. It's very handy and it's exactly what I used when I was setting this board up. And then we have the backpack. So we'll go into details about each here. This is a Sea Gods bag. So this is made of a canvas material. And you can see there's actually five handles on this bag, which I actually really do appreciate. It gives you multiple grabbing spots. Um, there's also some deck bungee here. I call it deck bungee. It's just called bungee. You can strap things such as your um, light vest or bigger items there. back here. Back is padded pretty well. This is a good amount of padding right here. You can see it's a good amount of back padding. There's also waist straps which allows you to secure to your waist pretty well. There's also chest straps to make sure that everything is anchored right onto you if you need to go on those longer journeys. One of the things I really like about this package is the wheels. These wheels are just great, especially when you have a lot of stuff in this bag and you don't necessarily want to carry it on your back, just wheel it. Now that we got the bag fully opened up, we'll just show you what's inside. One of the features I do appreciate about it is these fin pockets, which is kind of upside down. I really like, you know, just show you right here. I really like it whenever bags include fin pockets because Whenever there's no pockets on the bag and you just throw it into the bag, it's a good way to lose things. So I do appreciate the designated areas that Sea Gods has, has with this bag. Overall, this is one of the better made and designed bags in the ice up industry. I mean, the quality of material is really good. Like you can tell this is just a tough, heavy duty bag. The zippers are big as well, which I do appreciate. You don't want chintzy zippers that break. So it's really good. And I also love, like I said, the multiple handles. I can't state that enough because whenever you have stuff in your trunk and you're trying to grab the bag, you have multiple grab points. You could go from here, 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 over right there, or even at the back as well as a little grab handle. So this is honestly one of the most well thought out bags in the ice up industry. This is the Sea Gods paddle. So this is a carbon hybrid shaft with a nylon blade it's actually very well designed there's not a lot of sub paddles that actually have the angle like this one does so that's great for whenever you're doing your paddle stroke and you want it even in the water to get the most out of your stroke also a teardrop blade which allows you to get a little bit more power out of each each paddling stroke you can see here we have carbon shaft there's multiple locking points which I appreciate whenever putting this pile together I didn't have any problems which is actually really nice because a lot of times I do have problems with paddles when I first get them but this not so much and I also really like this little line right here 
it allows the power to stay in place, which is really nice. And it doesn't allow this handle to move, which is very much appreciated factor. I also really appreciate the carbon handle. This really contours your hand nice and it feels very nice to paddle, Com especially compared to plastic handles. I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same, but you got a nice little carbon grip, feels good and smooth on your hands and you can paddle for longer. This is the Sea Gods pump. It is dual chamber, triple action. And it also has two valves. It has an inflation valve here and a deflation valve here. Now I really like using this deflation valve whenever you're packing up the board and you want to get as much air out of it as possible. It's really handy for that. So when I say that this pump is triple action, what I mean is there's different pressure settings that you can do. So as you can see from this diagram here, there's low pressure, middle pressure, and high pressure. In the beginning, you want low pressure. That will pump as much air out as possible. So that's using two valves on the up and down. The next setting is when you start getting to about two to three PSI or in this case, 0.4 to 0.8 bar. That's at least my experience anyway. Then you want to flip it to that setting and it will go on the down pump. So the up pump, you won't have it as much. So it's still manual to pump. And as soon as it gets even more difficult, then you want the high pressure setting. That will just use one chamber and it'll be on the up and down. This is the Santa Touring fin that comes with the Skyla CX. So this is a click and fin, which means you just have to add a bit of pressure to it and it'll click in. You don't need any tools necessary. Oh, it does come with a screw for those fin boxes. So what you do is you just slide this little metal piece right here, right in like that, and then you apply some pressure. I usually like to do one rubber nub. That allows it to go in fine. As soon as you have three, it's hard to get in, so. Just do one, maybe two. Add some pressure and then it's in just like that. And to release the fin, you just do this. Yank it like that, just like that. So now here are the pros and cons, or as I say, the things I like are things that maybe a board could do a little bit better, in my opinion. So there's a lot of things I really like about this board. Like first off, this Drew Brophy design. Look, just look at the back of the board. It is so detailed. You're really not gonna find that on very many other ISOPs. Like this is probably the most detailed ISOP I've probably ever seen, to be honest. Sea Gods is so good at just having these back of the board designs, working with local artists, I really love it. In terms of on-water performance, I'd say that this is a little bit more of a maneuverable board and it's good for beginner and intermediate paddlers. So don't let the pointed nose fool you so much. It's not necessarily a pure touring board. It has more all around characteristics in my opinion, but it will help displace the water, especially when there's waves. I also really like the click and fin system, really simple. And I do like that they have this little slot to allow you to fold. That is honestly huge and I really like that design because it just makes folding the board so much easier. Now just looking at the front of the board layout, I really like the extra bungee deck webbing. That part is really good for small little items, it's perfect. I like that they also have D-rings, action mounts, which allows you to transform this board into many different things that you need. You can get like a kayak seat for it, you can even install a light in the action mounts. A lot of good things you can do. So really like the deck pad, like I said, it is supremely grippy, especially on bare feet. And finally, I do like the stability of this board. I compared this to the Carter Marina and I found that this board had a lot more primary stability. Now onto the things that I felt could be improved with the Skyla CX. If I'm honest, there's not really a lot especially if you treat this as an all-around board. It really is very well designed, especially with cross weave drop stitching material. The fin design is great, but if I was to add one little thing to it, I would add side fins to this. Now I know side fins sort of slow down ISOPs a little bit, but they give you better tracking. So if you had like removable five inch side fins, it would definitely allow you to kind of tweak the performance of this board a little bit more. 
another thing I'd say is maybe it's tracking could be a bit improved and I would say again that's because of the width of the board and the one fin setup but it does it does look like a touring board and I think a lot of folks kind of look at this board and think oh great this, this is gonna be my touring board but between this and the Carter Marina, I would say the Carter Marina is more of the touring board just because of its length and it's a little bit skinnier. But this is still a great crossover slash hybrid and it does open up the doors to a lot more different paddlers. This board has a lifetime warranty. Now what the lifetime warranty means is it's not your lifetime, but it's the lifetime of the product, which is approximately five years. I recently looked at this in uh, Sea God's website and that's the number that they put for that. So we'll say about a five year warranty, as long as you treat it well, I'd say do regular rinsing after you're finished with it, etc. And this board comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So in 30 days, you can return this board if you don't like it, but it has to be returned within good condition. It may be lightly used, but you can't have scuffs, can't have scratches. Do I recommend the Sea God Skyla CX? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a very underrated board in terms of maneuverability and using it for all around paddleboard characteristics. It's a great board for a wide variety of paddlers from intermediate to beginners. It's very well made. It is one of the first boards from the Sea God lineup that has the cross wing drop stitching, which they've now incorporated in almost all of their boards and it is supremely stable. It also is very sturdy when I was jumping on it. The board didn't bounce very much, which is an indication of very good st um, stability as well as rigidity. So overall, yeah, I think this is an absolutely fantastic board. If you found this review helpful, feel free to like and subscribe to the video. It helps me a long way in doing things and keep keeping up these reviews. And if you're interested in looking at the written review or you wanna buy the product, feel free to check the links in the description. So having the opportunity to paddle both these boards, I just wanted to include this footage in case you're unsure which to get, because I'm sure a lot of people are looking at either or, so like either the Carter Marina CX or the Skyla CX. So which would I use for what? The Skyla CX, which is this paddle board right here, I would use for more of sort of like all around purposes, like day paddling would be perfect. Even if you're on the water for more than a few hours, this is a really good board for that. But it has more all around paddleboard characteristics and that's because it is a little bit wider in length. You could kind of even see between the two boards, the width. So what would the Carter Marina CX be for? used for. This would be more the designated touring board for those who still want some stability and want to load the board with a bit of weight. For those who want to maybe do even do multi-day trip, this is probably the perfect board for that. I mean, both boards do have quite a bit of bungee deck webbing on them, but I do feel like the on-water performance, especially the speed, was a little bit more impressive with the Carter Marina CX. And that's simply because of the nose. The nose is a lot more uplifted, so there's less drag coming to it whenever you're paddling harder strokes. As opposed to the Skyla CX, there was a little bit more water disturbance whenever I was paddling harder, even when I was looking at the nose. If you want to compare and contrast these two boards on water performance specs, take a look at my other YouTube videos, which I will link right at the top. Till then, see ya.